The two mallet selection this year comes from pages 22 through 23 from the book Masterpieces for Marimba, compiled and arranged by Thomas McMillan. The most important aspect to consider with the two mallet etude is to always play with a great sound quality. Don't overplay the instrument with harsh downstrokes. This piece in particular is from the Baroque era, which usually means you're gonna play with a lighter style and forward motion. This year's selection is a transcription of the second movement or the Allegro from Handel's Sonata for Violin in E major. And you could find it with HWV 373. This etude requires fluid hands, spot on accuracy, and the ability to always know what's coming up next. If you aren't thinking ahead and using stiff motions, your sound quality and note accuracy will suffer. As a general process to prepare this etude, learn to play the correct notes at a steady tempo. Practice slow at first to develop good habits and accurate execution. Play the etude with short phrases to perform exact notes and rhythms and establishing the correct stickings as well. Repeat these short phrases to ingrain positive habits because repetition is key, repetition is key, repetition is key. Regarding stickings, first experiment with the suggested stickings that are in the music. Then try some other options to see what might work best. Personally, I followed most of the written stickings but did change a few. Generally, I tried to avoid playing double strokes unless absolutely necessary. This meant that I played several sections with left hand lead, even though I'm right handed. And then playing passages with alternating hands allowed me to have an even sound across the board. Because I chose to alternate hands for a majority of the piece, I did have to adjust and move my body a little bit to have good hand placement and get the mallets out of the way with my stroke types. There are times when you see me rotate my shoulders and my hips to get a mallet out of the way for better stroke types. Let me show you a, a small little snippet of this. It measures 49 to 52. You'll notice that I shifted to my right to allow my right hand to get out of the way so my left hand could move fluidly to get a great sound. So there's times where my right hand gets out of the way and there's times where my left hand gets out of the way. And it's all to help me give great accuracy and great sounds. Once you decide on a particular sticking, write it in your music. Always mark your stickings to develop a kinesthetic awareness of the piece and consistency in your practicing. And if you need to change a few stickings as you speed up the tempo, do so and then again, change it in the music. Another great learning tool for this piece is to label the chord progressions. While learning and practicing this piece, I label chord progressions throughout to help me anticipate the next measure, statement, or gesture. For example, at letter A, the chords move from what we call a 5-7 chord, or B dominant 7 chord is another way you can say it. It resolves to the 1 chord, or E major. It's what the key of this piece is. More specifically, I know what the notes are of that 5-7 chord. I know that it's a B, D-sharp, F-sharp, and A. And the notes in the 1 chord, or the E chord, are an E, G-sharp, and B. This helps me to see those specific notes pop out and then it shows me the general shape of each measure. Much of this piece utilizes scales, chords, and arpeggios. So take advantage of these patterns and simple chord progressions to make the learning process easier. You'll start to notice these longer phrases as you play the piece. So what's great about it is you won't be thinking note to note, but rather chord to chord or measure to measure and then bigger picture, phrase to phrase. Speaking about phrasing, every year during the Allstate process, there's so many wonderful discussions, maybe lively discussions, about tempos, interpretations, and subjective musical decisions. I love this part of the audition process because students and directors can infuse their own ideas into the music. For my musical decision process, I listened to recordings of the original violin and continuo, piece. So violin or piano were quite a few of the recordings. 
I was able to identify peak moments, arrival points, small moments that rise and fall with the shape, notes to stress, unstress, and I developed a sound in my ear to recreate a graceful flow compared to the original version. Overall, the musical nuances are key for the next level of your preparation. I encourage you, however, before we get to that point, create an amazing solid foundation of note accuracy, dynamic contrast, and great sounds before you take these next steps of adding these musical additions to the piece. So here are a few steps to consider regarding the phrasing. First, prepare your hands and internal pulse to play in time with no fluctuations to start off with. Play with various metronome games to develop the steady time and pulse. Then when you add various articulations, gestures, and musicality, think about the longer phrases and try to avoid making sudden or drastic changes that could negatively affect the sense of pulse and flow. Rolls and trills for this piece. The rolls should be carefully executed to not overplay the release notes especially. The purpose of the rolls is to merely sustain these notes, again, to sound closer to the original violin part. In most of these violin recordings, the release notes don't have a sharp attack sound. Make note also that there's an errata that extends two rolls on page one which I feel more closely match the violin articulations. The two trills at the bottom of each page are merely coloring the written pitch. Once again, don't overplay these notes. Specifically, measure 64, I've heard several different interpretations, so I've chosen to play what we call a mordant figure, which is merely three notes. But some, if you want to, you can choose to play more notes than that and connect it to beat one in measure 65, I chose the mordant figure, and this is kind of what it sounds like. So I play those three notes just to color that written D. Also with these trills, make sure you start the diatonic note above the written pitch in the music. So here are three additional tips for this piece. I chose the Innovative Percussion IP514 to highlight the lightness of the style and clarity of the 16ths at all dynamics. These mallets allow me to exaggerate the contrast between those loud and soft dynamics. Practice sections with hands separately. I love this aspect. I love this practice method. This will train your hands to know and anticipate some of the fast and somewhat potentially awkward motions around the instrument. This was very helpful for me at letter A and measures 40 to 44 to train my hands to know exactly where and when to move for the chord changes. And then overall, continue practicing your fundamentals. Scales, intervals, arpeggios, develop your chops so you can have consistent hand-to-hand -hand motions and comfortability moving around the board. It's a great etude. I really like how it complements the four mallet etude. So good luck, have a great time with this etude and enjoy performing, preparing, and working this piece up for your auditions.